Hey everyone, John Fennell here again from Great Lakes Fly Shop uh, going over the tying of the tequila. Um, we brought up a little bit of it on the last video. The tequila is a incredible fly for steelhead, trout, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass. Uh, use it quite a bit up here in the Northland. Anyway, so we're going to go over the tying materials. As in the previous video, we got into a little bit of the history of it. So please watch previous video. Uh, so we're going to go over the tying materials for this streamer, uh, tequila streamer. Uh, of course, the first part of it is the hook. That's the primary part. And uh, the hook that we're going to be using is the TMC 300 size 4. On top of that, we're using a 3 16th inch uh, Cyclops bead. And uh, I use gold. You could use copper, you could use black. Uh, the preference for color is pretty much based on your own, whatever you think works best for the fly. I like gold because it puts a little bit more flash into it. Not that this fly needs any more flash, but it just looks a lot better with a gold bead. That's just my view. Um, we're also going to be using rubber legs and the choice is uh, the medium round rubber yellow legs. Uh, I like the little heavier size rubber legs for this fly. It is a size 4 so it is a bass fly primarily that I use it for. So for me a heavier uh, rubber leg versus a silly leg or crazy legs I like the uh, medium round rubber in yellow, uh, so it works pretty good with this fly. Uh, the tail material is going to consist of uh, Crystal Flash Hot Yellow, and uh, I'll show you how that all goes together with it. And the two parts of the tail will be yellow and brown, so those are the colors that I like the best with this fly. You can use different colors also with this. You can use chartreuse and purple. So just keep that in mind as you're tying this fly that you don't have to necessarily use choosing colors, but as the tequila, they do ask for yellow and they ask for brown. Uh, choice of body colors, two ranges. You can use root beer uh, in the cactus chenille or Aztez or you can use uh, copper, which I like to use copper. Uh, it tends to go better with the materials that you're tying with. It gives it a little bit more character and flash. So, uh, I hope I covered everything. So in that case, let's get started. The uh, thread of choice is brown. I like using brown thread and I like using it in the uh, heavier duty series um, mostly because as it's it's a heavier duty fly so you want to be able to put some strength into the fly so what I use I use Danville's 210 series uh, nylon thread uh, it works really well I've been using it for many years and uh, it doesn't snap off so easy as other f threads tend to do. So anyway, uh, I also use it with a large bass bobbin also, so with of course a ceramic tip. So when tying this fly, you know, just keep in mind that you have a lot of steps to take in tying this fly. There are things that can assist you in it. One is a cup of water and I'll show you why in a minute because when you're working with marabou it tends to be uh, tends to be pretty wild it has a character all of its own um, so it definitely has a lot of movement to it so that's why I like it mostly um, so tying it on, generally what you try to do is measure it up against the length of the hook shank. You know, you could pretty much use it based on uh, longer lengths, but I like it where it's just the right size, where it's just puffing up. 
And all, all I do is I take it and I size it all up, go back and forth with each hand. And then I just lay it on top of the hook shank, secure it. Okay. Once it's on the hook, I like to cut the excess off. And I do that in an angle because we don't want a, a big lump in the middle of the body of the fly. You know, so what I do is I pretty much cut it at an angle and then I secure it. I just turn the vise a little bit so you get a little bit better picture uh, from tying this. Okay, after that, I take my crystal flash. I cut two ends on the top corners there. That way it facilitates getting your flash out a lot better. And again, if I'm going pretty fast with this, and there's some spots that you don't quite understand, give me a call. My number is 218-740-3040 here at the shop, Great Lakes Fly Shop. Be more than happy to go over the steps with you. All right, so on each side, I put flash on this side. I cut it, I don't like it being attached, so I just cut it. You can leave it attached and just bring it over, but I just like cutting it and then I bring and I put the other end on the other side. Okay, and that gives you flash on both sides, which is very important for this fly. I find when I'm fishing it, that when I'm stripping it in the water, that flash in the tail really adds a lot to it. So, highly recommend it. The next color is brown, and I look for the fluffiest ones, of course. I use uh, strung Chinese or strung uh, marabou. I don't like the woolly bugger marabou because it's a little too fluffy. I like a longer streamer kind of look. So then I lay the brown on top. Pretty heavy tail for a streamer. Normally you just use one piece of marabou, but, and you can thin it down by maybe cutting it up, but hey, it's, it's, a, it's a size four streamer, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna take away too much of an action for a size four. If it was a size 10 or if it was a size 12 or a size eight, yeah, maybe you might wanna cut it down a little bit, you know, the tail itself. But in this case, it's, uh, it seems to work out okay. And as you can see, it gives it that two-tone look, which is pretty important. Next, what I like to do is add the body material, and in this case, we're using Estes. And uh, I, I stock this in the store. This is pretty good stuff. You can also use cactus chenille. I don't know if they have it in a copper color, but if they do, it's well worth it. It's a really, really good color. I like using it for other flies also. I like copper. Okay, once I've secured the material ready for wrapping, uh, I basically use the rubber legs. And in doing so, uh, the rubber legs are joined, you know, they're a fat strip. So they're joined. And all you do is you just pull them apart, cut them in certain strips, lengths. I just take it, then fold them back in half, cut them, okay, lay them down, take another one, so keep in mind that I may seem like I'm going a little quick with this, but the reason I am too is because the store is open, uh, I have been open during the virus 
cautions. Uh, the state of Minnesota has determined that a uh, fishing business is, is important for our getting outdoors and enjoying this beautiful state of Minnesota. So please use your own caution if you like wearing masks or if you think it's important to wear a mask or if you wear gloves. Don't feel in any way, shape, or form that when you come in the store that, you know, you're going to look weird. You're not. It's, it's very important for all of us to uh, put caution out there. Anyway, so when you're putting on the rubber legs, you've got three sets that you have to put on there. So one set on each side. So what I do is I take the rubber legs, I fold them around the thread. Pretty easy, just fold them around the thread, bring them up to the body and secure them. Now, the one thing you'll notice in this is that you'll notice how the marabou is just going crazy and it wants to get wrapped up in everything. What I do is I take a cup of water You know, take a take a cup of water and uh, works pretty good. So take a cup of water and uh, moisten your fingers and. Comb back that marabou. Get that marabou out of the way because it'll it'll definitely want to get into everything. So just wet your fingertips and moisten down that marabou so it stays out of the way. Works a lot better for you. I do that on the my side and then I go right to the other side and do the same thing. You will find sometimes that the rubber legs want to curl on you, but that's no big deal. Just let them uncurl. Then what you do is I have a material holder on my vise. Okay, if you can see real close. I do have a spring-loaded material holder right here. And what I do is I take that material holder and I bend back the first set of rubber legs, then go to the second set of rubber legs, and then I can go forward to the second set. Now you might be looking at this going, holy smokes, there's a lot of rubber legs on this fly and yes, it is a challenge to get all of them on there nicely. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to uh, have them not being spaced apart nice. So after I've done those two on there, then I also clip them onto the back. And the reason I do that now is because as you're going forward with this, you'll find that having the rubber legs out of the way tends to be a lot easier when you're working with it. The other nice thing about this fly is that there is no hackle involved. You can in, uh, include hackle into this fly, it just makes it a lot more challenging to, to do. Uh, now what I do is I take the body material, I've undone the rubber legs, now they're ready. Here's where the challenges start, all right? So as you're wrapping Estez or Cactus Chenille, whatever you like to use, you'll find that it wants to uh, not lay right. So what you do is you just take your hands and as you're combing, as you're wrapping it forward, just comb it. Just comb each, each filament, each fiber like that up. Just, you know, not, not real heavy. It doesn't need a whole lot. Just, just as you're getting closer and closer to each pair of legs, you know, just, just comb it back a little bit. And as I get to the first set of rubber legs, I get real close up on the edge of where it's joined to the hook. And then what I do is I hold the first set of rubber legs back 
and bring my forward wrap with the Estes right up against the base of the legs. Then I go forward on the other side and do the same thing. As I'm wrapping forward again, keep in mind you have to put the Estes in between each pair of rubber legs, okay? So you're wrapping forward, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm going pretty fast with this because again, the store is open and if a customer walks in, I do have to stop. And So as you're doing this, make sure that you understand you have to manage these rubber legs. These rubber legs tend to always want to go where you don't want them to go, but you just reach with your fingers, just grab each pair, just like that, and bring the Estes in front and then clip them in the back, you know, on the material holder. Makes it a lot easier. And then wrap forward. Now, comb it back. You know, Estes or Cactus Chenille, you just comb it back with your fingers. Simple as that. And as you get up toward the last pair of rubber legs, you'll have a sigh of relief to know that you made it through the gauntlet of rubber leg craziness. So then as the last step, you just take the rubber legs, hold them back, put the front wrap in there, take the other side, fold them back, put the other side in front, you know, the wrap of the Estes, and then head toward the bead. As you're heading toward the bead, you want to keep in mind that Cyclops beads, cone heads, they all have a large opening in the back. They have a small opening that goes toward the eye, but they also have a large opening in the back. And the reason that is is because you want to get as much material as possible clipped in behind that bead. But once you've done that, secure it. Again, this is why you have good heavy duty thread because you are securing some pretty heavy stuff. Once you've done that, clip it off. Put a little bit of more thread in there. Secure it. I only use two wraps. I put head cement on it, you know, so I don't need to put eight wraps, 10 wraps of whip finish. I just put head cement on there. Typically, just secure it with head cement and it'll be fine. I tie these also a little commercially in the shop. So I've had numerous customers catch lots of fish with one fly. So I don't think you really need to beef it up any more than it should be. Okay, makes sense. If you got questions, again, call me at the shop, 218-740-3040. Or you can email me at lesterriver at aim, A-I-M dot com. Again, John Fennell here at Great Lakes Fly Shop, tying the tequila. Uh, final presentation with this, final tying, is I like to take each rubber leg side, as you can see. And then I trim them. Trim on that side. Trim on that side. And again, there you go. Size four, tequila streamer. Use it for a lot of purposes. Steelhead, trout, um, also for bass. Bass love them on the Mississippi River. Uh, is where primarily where I fish, St. Louis River catches them outside of Duluth here. So a lot of applications for the tequila. Uh, tie yourself a bunch of these things because your friends are going to want some also. Again, we'll talk to you later. And uh, if you got any questions, concern, give me a call or email me and uh, we'll discuss a lot of different things. Thanks a lot. Bye.